Hey, we've got the great AJ Benzer here on the podcast. AJ, how are you doing today? Doing well, my friend. How are you? I'm awful. I ate curry and I somehow got it in my eye, so I'm in a great mood. Oh, sorry. But uh, first thing i got to ask you about was I was watching Vice the other day, and I rarely yeah. watch Vice, and this fucking program comes on called The Hunt for the Trump Tapes, and there's uh, my favorite ex-boyfriend, AJ Benz, in it. <laughs> now, i got to ask you about, uh, of course, that's hosted by Tom Arnold. Uh, yeah. Do, do you not think he's going a little bit off the fucking deep end with this Trump shit? Yeah, it's, it's driven him crazy. It's driven him insane. He's never been... He's never been more uh, more nuts than he is now. It's 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 taken over his whole life. It helped ruin his marriage to his latest wife. They're they're separated, headed for a divorce. Yeah, it made him insane, totally. And he fucking uh, but to me, he just came across that he doesn't want to impeach Trump. He wants true lies too. Yeah, yeah, he definitely needs work. And he was he was really good in True Lies. He's not. Uh, He's not the most capable actor, but he, he was good in that. But Tom is just kind of a lost soul. He uh, he works here and there. He gets on stage at different comedy clubs uh, around the country. But, you know, yeah, he'd love a big movie role. But I don't think he's going to get it because he's too nuts lately. Yeah, he, he fucking says true lies too more than I say her while I'm watching porno. <laughs> There's no true lies too. I don't, Schwarzenegger won't even barely talk to him if you saw the show. He 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 surprised Schwarzenegger outside of a gym, I think, and uh, Arnold wanted no part of it. Yeah, Arnold's probably like, I'd rather speak about my Nazi heritage than talk to this cunt. <laughs> right, exactly. But uh, exactly. I, I gotta ask you as well. Of course, uh, after I heard you on the uh, Adam Carolla's podcast too. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Well, what's it like dealing with Adam Carolla on that podcast? Because he fucking, like, he doesn't shut his mouth. He's hilarious. But is it difficult as a guest going on? You know, it's a good question. It's a really good question. The first time I went on there, he didn't really look at me much. And I never really met him for a long period of time. So, and, you know, he does talk a lot. So you got to you gotta wait your turn to get some some shit in there. But... He didn't look at me much, and I said, I don't think he likes me. And a couple of people called me and said, oh, Adam loved your, your appearance. It was great. I said, I didn't feel like he liked it. He goes, they said, no, he has, like, uh, Asperger's syndrome. And, you know, sometimes he'll close his eyes when he's talking because he's thinking of something to say. And he has a an incredible memory. And now I've done the show about six or seven times. I'm fairly regular on there now. I just did it a couple of nights ago. He's totally – I totally get him. He's brilliant. His mind doesn't stop working. And uh, I now I know his rhythm, so I know when I can jump into a joke and when I got to shut up. But, yeah, he's great. He's great. It's different than Howard Stern. Howard Stern allowed me to talk more, but that usually gets you in more trouble. Mm. So Adam is good. Adam is great at what he does. I love going on that show. Have you been caught checking out uh, Gina's big tits? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they're bigger in person. Yeah, I had her, uh, I interviewed her back in November, and she was doing the video chat, and I was, I thought I was going to have to pay Paula some money. Right. Because she's, she's <laughs> fucking good looking. She's a, she's a nice hoe. <laughs> she's a real good chick. I never, I never met the boyfriend. She's got a boyfriend with a kid. I never met him, but uh, she seems happy. She's a wonderful person to, to hang out with. She's uh, really nice and sweet, gets the joke. There's not a lot of girls that you can bring into that kind of climate. And mm. say the things we say in front of her, and she allows it. A lot like Robin Quivers with Howard Stern. But I gotta. One of the things I love hearing you rant about on Twitter and shit is PC culture, because we all know you're yeah. the biggest snowflake in Hollywood, right? Yeah, sure. But uh, what? Now, of course, the big film at the minute is Avengers Endgame, which is now being accused of homophobia because they did this weird thing where they focused on the action instead of two men sucking each other's dicks <laughs> so uh what do you think about uh stuff like that being accused of homophobia um i don't uh, you know i didn't see that movie i probably never will i'm not a comic book guy um so i can't relate to a scene you're talking about in particular but 
I don't think there's any homophobia in Hollywood. I think it's the exact opposite. Everybody in Hollywood is dying to produce and make programming that includes homosexuals and transgenders and everything else. There's a mad dash for every sexuality under the sun to be included in every pilot, every movie. It's changing the landscape of films every day. And I think they're worse for it because it's not the world I grew up in. Maybe the movies will look good 30 years from now when my kids are in their 40s. But right now I'm looking at movies and no house that I hung out at had a Chinese guy, a lesbian, a black dude and a gay guy in the kitchen all talking about it's all bullshit. It doesn't exist. It's a fucking Benetton ad that no one cares about. I'm I'm waiting for uh, for to have the the buddy cop uh, TV show made about uh, two pedophiles. <laughs> yeah, I got but, really disgusted because the Converse sneaker brand just gave a they 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 made a sneaker for LGBTQ people, and they put a rainbow sole on the bottom of the sneakers. That's the big thing, and and now they. They dragged a few uh, high profile LGBTQ people and gave them a sneaker for themselves. And it just dawned on me this the company that should have done the, the sneaker should have been Vans because that's what pedophiles drive, anyhow. <laughs> it's a natural marriage, you know, Vans to have a gay flag on the bottom was perfect. And you know what? I just uh, dawned on me that gay flag is offensive to the colorblind, gay people discriminate. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I looked at a bunch of flags the other day. There's about 30 different flags for each different sexual orientation. And I never noticed this, but the lesbian flag has a battle axe on it. And I thought it should be a couple of pair of scissors. <laughs> or a fucking uh, a shredded fish. <laughs> should it yeah, it, it's, it's getting crazy in, in here. I don't know about your country, but... Everything that's being done in Hollywood is to uh, is very inclusive, very tolerant. You can't say anything out of the way. If you, I, I watched the Met the Met Gala the other day. I watched the people walk up the red carpet with their crazy outfits and shit. And the only straight guys there were the six men who carried Billy Porter, the actor. On uh, they carried him in on, on, a, on an Egyptian pharaoh bed like Cleopatra. Everybody else was gay. Or trans, or just a chick looking to looking for some attention or followers. I don't know what's happening. It, it's just everything is about gender fluidity and bending genders and fuck that. Yeah, it's like Bruce Springsteen, uh, the boss. He'd go nowhere if he started these days because they'd oh, be like, exactly. yeah. uh, "That's a good like, point. That's a good point. Uh, You're right. Yeah, I I, uh, I want to cut my dick off and get tits." <laughs> Yeah, he's not going to tell a story before one of his songs about experimenting with his buddy Roger under the tree in fucking New Jersey. I remember when me and three guys, we were, we were talking about Vietnam, but instead we <laughs> fucked each other. This one's called Rosita. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, fucking each other, you, of course, produced After Porn Ends. Oh, yeah. Uh, which was on Netflix. And. Spoiler alert, it doesn't end for me. <laughs> but uh, but I got to ask you, what do you think about the state of the, the porno industry these days? Because whenever I accidentally go on those websites, it's yeah. all like stepmom sucks son yeah, dick. Yeah, it's really weird. It's weird. I don't know what this whole fascination is with uh, I walked in and my stepsister or, you know, my mom, my stepmom caught me. That, I... I don't know anybody who has those sort of fantasies. Just give me a hot chick and a decent looking guy. And then I'd love to enjoy some Asian porn, but they block out everything. I hate that. They, uh, the Asian stuff, what I don't like is because a lot of the fellows are on steroids. So when they're with an Asian woman these days, they're choking the fuck out of them. And there's yeah. like snot and shit coming out of their mouth. <laughs> yeah, the video, you know what it's done? I had a lot of fun for a good 20 years in New York and LA dating and I had a ball, but I got to be honest, the porn back then wasn't the way it looks now. Now 
the porn you see on the internet, you'd be led to believe that you could do anything you want to a girl, anytime, anywhere, as hard as you want, and it always ends with jerking off on her face. That's not the way things normally end. I mean, it just isn't. But every young guy thinks that's the normal way to do it. Yeah, the, the worst thing that ever happened to porn was uh, HD cameras, because now we can see where their pimp was punching them. <laughs> but yeah, I don't want to see uh, the only you know, the ones that the ones that get me are the girls who go in there for casting to get a job, and then they, they they're told, "Listen, there's no job, but we'll give you, you know, fucking a thousand dollars to fuck you." And I, I like seeing those reactions from real people, not. I'm I'm past the actress and the actor stage. I like seeing a regular chick come in and just decide to fuck a stranger. That that's a cool thing. I, I'd love to meet the, the porno director who took himself too seriously and was like, "Yeah, uh, we know you took the load in the arsehole there, but uh, <laughs> let's go for another take about that plumbing scene." <laughs> yeah, you know, I dated a porn star some years ago, and I was like, you know, it was weird when I first asked her out. But I finally knew we'd go out together. So I said, what are you, um, what are you doing Wednesday night? She goes, um, well, uh, I'll get back to you. She goes, actually, I'm working Wednesday night. How's Thursday? And I thought, like, I don't want to fucking date her after a porn shoot. But then <laughs> when can you date her? I'm like, you're working Wednesday? Well, how's Tuesday? I don't want to fucking see you after, the, after you shoot. But you tend to forget about that uh, because once you get with them, they're pretty much the same as other chicks. They don't do what they do on camera. Like it, it, it's a job for most of them. They're the ones like, I did, anyhow. They're just like all the chicks that I did. They uh, have sex with black guys in different buildings. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did. I did after porn ends because I love Tara Patrick. I've known Tara over twenty years, and the reason I got involved is they. I told my buddy who was producing it, I can get you Tara Patrick and. He said, if you can get her, that's great. I'll let you produce with me and I'll, we'll put her on the cover. And then uh, she came to L.A. and she let me interview her. Um, I, I think she's the best. To me, she was my favorite of all time, Tara. Yeah, what well, mine would be, do you remember uh, Kobe Tai? Yeah, yeah. So I, I used to date a girl who looked like her. And when I mm. first met her, I was like, is that fucking... Uh, and of course, I couldn't bring it up to her because it was like, because then she'd be like, Oh, you're one of these porn addicts, and it's like, yes, it's something <laughs> yes, I enjoy. Of course, uh, they all love it. They all, they, yeah. What I don't like there's a new, there's a new kind of woman now. There's these sex workers. I, I, I dated a chick who now has become this. Uh, she basically, she's not a dominatrix, but she like, she, she, she humiliates men. That's her job. Like they call her for phone sex, and they like getting humiliated. And her, one of her big money. One of her big earns the last two years is she has Trump voters call her and she humiliates them to the point where they, they, they apologize for voting for Trump. She makes them say that as they're coming. Uh, you know, I actually, <laughs> I like to hire uh, female prostitutes and pay them to not talk while I'm watching The Dark Knight. <laughs> right. Yeah, like Charlie Sheen. Uh, yeah, Charlie Sheen, but... Speaking of uh, Dark Knights, I've got to ask you about uh, Jussie Smollett or whatever his name is this yeah, week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he's just get paid, apparently, nearly $2 million to not uh, come back for his shitty TV show. And i got to ask you, not that I'm trying to put words in your mouth, but uh, it's okay. do you think that he would have got that if he happened to be uh, a cracker? No, absolutely not. As a matter of fact... Uh... Just look at Roseanne Barr. Roseanne Barr lost everything because of one joke. They even took her show away from her and did another season with characters she created and developed. No, it's disgusting. If you're if you're if you're white or if you're conservative, you can't get away with ninety percent of the shit that liberal or black people or ethnic ethnic people get away with in Hollywood. It's completely ridiculous. I haven't heard about him getting money. I got to look into that. Yeah, uh, that's the latest humor. But speaking of money, yeah. But speaking of money, and I've got to ask you about this guy because it's right first became aware of you is a uh, hard stern. Now I think it's pretty obvious that the hard stern that you used to interact with is nowhere yeah. nearly the guy that he is in 2019. So, what's your take on the the changing of hard stern? 
<clears throat> for you know, I hated it. I don't I don't listen to his show in the last at least ten years. I haven't listened. Um, I don't think it's funny anymore at all. I think he's changed for the worse. You know, I'm on the same bandwagon as a lot of Stern fans who are disappointed in the direction he took. But I'll say this. I, as mad as I am, I can't get too mad at him because he gave us the best fucking radio for at least 25 years. And now that he's 65, he just doesn't want to do that shit anymore. So as an artist, you can't get mad at an artist for just wanting to do something new. It's frustrating for us, but I always say to people, I was in that studio about a hundred times. How many years can you throw baloney at a girl's ass in the studio and still make it fun? Like you start to de become desensitized to everything. I remember being there one morning, these two sisters came on and they went, they ate each other out on, on, on the, on the floor of the studio while we did the show <clears throat> and we're all watching this. And it was like seven ten in the morning. And it, I looked at Howard and he didn't look so thrilled. Like, that that was even going on. So I think he was getting tired of those kind of antics for a while. Um, it sucks that it's gone. But once they once they let like guys like Gary and all these other guys, Ralph, curse and talk about their old sex stories, it, it lost its appeal for me. Because everybody on the Stern show, and I'll, I've said this to them in front of me, everybody on that show was the kind of kid that you would pick last in the schoolyard if you were playing a game of football or rugby or basketball or soccer they're all like fucking they're, they're nobodies but on that show they all have great personalities and they're great to fuck around with but basically they're all loser type guys and um it it, it created an it created a, a, an atmosphere of a bunch of guys who never got laid and now suddenly they're talking about getting laid and it didn't work for me Just, yeah and, but uh, speaking of stuff that uh did work. You, of course, acted in Rocky Six. Mm. Now, be honest with me. When you got that role, were you a little nervous because Stallone yeah. had a, had a shit run of yeah. films for a while? Yeah, I my manager called and said uh, they want you to read for Rocky Six, and I said Rocky Six, Rocky Five was fucking awful. Like, how, there's no Rocky Six. And he said, Well, they're calling it Rocky Balboa. I said, Well, fuck, I'll read for it, but. And I had met Stallone 10 years earlier. Um, he was always nice to me, but I hadn't seen him. And when I went to go read, the next day they called me back in and said, Sly, I'd like to see you. And I said, what are you doing? You know, he says, I, they told me no for 15 years. They were begging me to stop, stop coming at them with an idea. And then I guess enough time passed. And uh, he came up with the idea of Adrian dying and how that could be better. And they went for it. And fuck, I'm glad they did. It was, I think that was probably the second or third best Rocky film. I would put it up there against Rocky II. Um, as, no one, I, I, no, no, the best movies are Rocky I and Rocky II. I think the sixth one beats number three. So I think it did well. It made a bunch of money. And it, it's, I mean, it definitely put Stallone back on the map. Then he did the Expendables again. And he's got so many fucking projects going on. It just doesn't stop. It's unbelievable. Like he's in his mid seventies and he's got Rambo Five coming in uh, September. <laughs> like, like I can't even walk up the fucking stairs fast without my back oh, hurting. The guy does pull, and it, you know what? He's a he's a really good guy too. I wish I had like a bad. The only time he was a dick was at the end of this film. I was I I'd been off for two weeks and I flew to Philadelphia to, to shoot the scene where I'm in the restaurant trying to get him to fight my guy. And I guess I was in shot for two weeks and I started doing my, my lines and he was ad-libbing. So I started ad-libbing back to him. And then he kept cutting saying, I don't want you to ad-lib. You just read the fucking, you just do your lines. And then he got mad at me because he said, you're talking to, you're talking down to me. I'm Rocky Balboa. You wouldn't talk down to me. You try. I, 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 I think he was trying to like psych me out. So I would lose some of my edge. Mm. And the next time we rolled, I was more, respectful of the, the character Rocky Balboa and I guess he was right because it, it, it worked but it was it was nerve-wracking when he got mad and kept cutting and um you know it was in a little restaurant so there were like 60 people sitting around everybody heard him get pissed off and then when it was done he patted me on the back he said you know thanks for hanging in there you're great 
He said, I know I could yell at you because if I yelled at Milo Ventimiglia, he would have ran on his trailer and cried all week. So <laughs> I felt good about that. Well, uh, speaking of nerve wracking, we've now come to the final two questions, AJ, oh, and we ask everybody these. So uh, <laughs> these could change it all for you and they could <laughs> make you end up getting the sex change if you get them wrong. <laughs> so right. here's the first one. Uh, who is the better band, Queen or the Beatles? For just just for sheer volume of work, I've got to go Beatles. But I'm a huge Queen fan. Although after watching Rami Malek play Freddie Mercury, I, I got to wash that taste out of my mouth. I think those fucking teeth were way too big for anybody's head. I saw those teeth in the Kentucky Derby. I'm gonna go Beatles because it, there's just more there. Although you know, Freddie was a better singer than anybody, but I'll go Beatles. Uh, sorry, that's the incorrect answer, it, <laughs> Queen. But you know, can you believe that uh, that that shows you how how modernized people have become? That after going to see Bohemian Rhapsody, a lot of straight men were going, "How come no guy sucked any dicks in that?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they didn't even show the real Freddie. I mean, that guy got down everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, he, he was a savage, but. Yeah. You can pull uh, that disappointing uh, answer, AJ, okay. with this final question, and this is the yep. big one, and you actually okay. have to get a sex change. <laughs> and uh, if you get this right, I'll give you some uh, trivia about uh, a Game of Thrones actor, because oh. Game of Thrones is filmed here. Oh, good, good. Uh, the Spice Girls are back. Who's your favorite Spice Girl? I'm going, uh, I'm going Mel B. She's nasty. She's dirty. I got to go with her because she's the most fun. I mean, if I'm looking for the most boring sex, I'm going to go posh. If I'm looking for a little a little jaunty kind of uh, call me in a week, I'd probably go. What's the blonde one's name? Is that Ginger? What the fuck's her name again? Uh, baby. Who? Baby Spice. Yeah, I think, I, think, I think I'm down to Mel B and Baby, but Mel B's got a better body for me. I like her skin tone. I'm more... That's more out of my kind of factory of the the type of girl I'd like. I know it's wrong, but I got to stick with Mel B. Well, I'm sorry, that's the incorrect answer. <laughs> uh, Baby Spice is the best. But uh, I'll give you that Game of Thrones trivia. So uh, uh, the Game of Thrones is filmed over here in Belfast. Yeah. And you know that the actor, the I think it's Jamie Lannister, he's got the, the metal yeah. hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, he went to what we would call a bad boy bar over here. And he got chased out because he was out of his mind on cook. Oh, wow. A gay, you said a gay bar or a big bar? Uh, bar well, uh, like a gang's bar. What was he? Wait, what's the name of the bar? Uh, Lavery's. How do you spell it? L-A-V-E-R-S. And why did he get thrown out? He was just high, too high? Uh, I think, yeah, because in there it's like there's certain people that ask for stuff and certain people you don't. And I think he was looking for another bag and uh, oh. he got uh, chased the fuck out and probably even a slap or two. Oh, nice. I like that. And where is that? What part of town is that in? Uh, just right in the middle of Belfast City Centre. Oh, man. And that was recently? Pretty recent? Uh, I think it was during the, yeah, during this current series that's on TV. And it's the guy, is it Jamie Lannister? I forget the first name. Yeah, it's, he's the one that has the metal hand in it. The metal did, hand? Yeah, the metal hand. He just oh, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, cool, yeah. Oh, by the way, I just looked up Baby Spice, and that's who I meant opposite Mel. I said, if it's not, if it's not Mel B, it would be her. I'm looking at her picture, so I was partly right. I just well, described I, the name wrong. Baby Spice would be my, my choice. It would be tough, but I'd probably still stick with Mel B. But yeah, I could see I could see the blonde being more of a popular choice in your part of the world. But yeah, well, for I, Mel B for the New Yorker in me, I'm going Mel B. Well, I say me, you, Jimmy Lannister, all go to that bad boy <laughs> bar, get a big bag of shit. We'll bring the Spice Girls and we'll fuck Her? the shit out of them and film it all. Well, you know, Mel B will be there in a second. No problem. <laughs> She'll let us film it. Listen, AJ, just want to thank you for your time here. You're brilliant. And uh, your podcast is great. I love following you on Twitter. Uh, I think you're class. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Keep listening to Famous a Bitch. I appreciate it.